1220khtshometownstation.com. The time is 4.19. I'm T. Katz, and I'm here now with Donna Nuzzi, who's here with the Home and KHTS Home and Garden Show. She is the Human Services Supervisor, who's here to talk to us about what the involvement of the City of Santa Clarita is going to be at the upcoming KHTS Home and Garden Show, which is taking place March 29th and 30th. Donna, welcome to the studio. Happy to be here. The, well, happy to have you. Very happy to have you in the studio. Now, your role with the city, um, what exactly are you going to be? Well, first of all, how long have you been involved with the um, Home and Garden um, show? Well, the Home and Garden show is part of the um, SCV Emergency Expo. This is the third year that um, we've been a part of this as a city of Santa Clarita having uh, being a sponsor to the event. Okay, and your role, you deal uh, with um, emergency preparedness. What does that mean? How, how is that going to play out at the Home and Garden Show? Well, at the Home and, at the uh, Expo, mm -hmm. at the Emergency Expo specifically, we're going to have a booth, booth space that's shared with our emergency management volunteers uh, from our CERT program, which is Community Emergency Response Training, and also our emergency communication volunteers, in addition to our building and safety division will also be there sharing our booth space. And we're there to basically uh, do some hands-on learning and demonstrations about being better prepared. Now, I know in my own household, you know, I have the tub and I keep, I try to be really good about rotating things. And I think one of the big mistakes we made once upon a time before the earthquake was the food choices. <laughs> Do you have any advice on food choices, what to put in there? And I know we have to rotate it and to check the expiration dates, but I had heard somewhere that you shouldn't get things like green beans and chickpeas if your family doesn't norm ordinarily eat green beans and chickpeas. Is, is there something you well, my recommendation is put f food in your emergency pack backpacks or um, even at, at home that you like to eat, all right? And that you want to make sure that the uh, salt content is not bad because if it's a high salt content, it's going to cause you to want to drink more water. So you need to look at your own dietary needs. You know, if you oh, like canned vegetables, then, yeah, do that. Um, but, you know, do you want to pack beef jerky, you know? You, typically people look at tuna, uh peanut butter. Oh, peanut but then butter, again, the staff of life. Yeah, I mean, but then look at what you, your family likes to eat. There are some freeze-dried foods that are prepackaged. Some of that stuff is palatable. Yeah. But, you know, if there's nothing else to eat, I'm like, I keep those in my car because right. they're, they sustain, you know, the heat to some degree. But, you know, it's definitely a personal choice that you need to look at, and that's part of family planning. Now, in addition to, you know, the mom, the dad, and the other people in the household, you have a special concern you want to talk about this year. Who else do we look out for during yeah. this time? Absolutely. This year, our campaign for the Emergency Expo is take care of the entire family. So it's the mom, dad, your family, and then don't forget your pets. Oh, now, it's true. A lot of times when you're preparing those kits, I don't always think cat food because I don't eat cat food. But my cat eats cat food. But things like in addition to the food and in water for the pet, I would imagine medicines are yeah, important. Medications and extra leash. Uh, Actually, we'll be at one of our giveaways is going to be a collapsible pet um, a pet bowl. So you have a you know a to go pet bowl oh, for your very animal. Good idea. But um, you know, and then your documentation. If you have to evacuate, you want to make sure that you have the way you would have your own own personal information, right, your own paperwork. You want to have that for your animal, and especially if maybe you get separated or you at many shelters, um, you know, um, you ca you cannot bring an animal. All right. Oh, I hadn't right. even Unless thought Unless it's a service that. animal. Okay, right. So sometimes the people and their animals could be separated. They could be co-located, but that you know they might that pet could be in a different area. So that that's another you part. You need of the paperwork to get you know reconnect with your pet. That's Absolutely, and then important. also having a photo of you and your animal together. Oh, like very, their own little important. ID. Absolutely, an Absolutely. ID for the fuzzy crowd. I like and, that and idea. Then, and then also. Very, very important. If a lot of people, especially with dogs and cats, a crate or a carrier. And right. one of the biggest things with that is that 
don't just put your animal in that crate when you have to evacuate out. It should be a life a way of a lifestyle that that animal knows when they're going to go in that crate. That means they need to get in and you're going to be leaving. My cat you know? usually knows that means we're on the way to the vet. Vet, what? yeah. <laughs> the little traveling house. Why are you putting me in there? And I often think to myself, you know, it's a shame that that is sort of associated with something kind of scary. I wish there was a way to acclimate her to it. And, I, it, you know, in the event of an emergency, that's certainly very, very good a very good idea to get the pet acclimated to their and I think dogs are m- more they, people crate them like when they sleep it's, and they kind of train them yes I think kitties need to be trained well you know it it's a very very good idea to concentrate on every single member of the family and if you and I know families uh, Donna that have a lot of pets they don't just have like a cat and a dog they've got uh, reptiles Correct. they've got guinea pigs they've that's a big traveling menagerie Birds, in mean, the event of a of, of um, evacuation. Wow. Yeah, and, and that's the thing too is like sometimes maybe it's not you're gonna uh, you you're gonna take that animal to a shelter, a pet shelter. But that's probably the last choice you want to take it to. You want to have a plan, maybe take it to a relative, sure. a friend or a neighbor, because that's you want that animal to be in, in, in a calm environment and not surrounded by many, many animals. And I wonder but if that's it's, the last resort. You know, when my kids were young, we would talk about like an emergency drill. If this is what would happen and this is what we would do and we would go outside, I wonder if it might not be a good idea to kind of do a practice evacuation with the animals, what that might feel like. Because I would imagine time is of the essence. And if you could understand what that is, that'd probably be helpful too. And especially here, you know, we're in a wildland fire interface here and when that wind blows and flames are roaring you know you don't want to be doing that the last minute right so. and so having that in mind and ready to go and having practiced that would be very beneficial to your family and obviously to your animals too well i look forward to march 29th and 30th coming to the khts home and garden show to see you and to see the booth and to learn more about emergency preparedness and there's going to be a lot of uh, other vendors there and obviously our first response responders um, will be there and it's a great uh, chance for kids to meet and greet with oh, all true superheroes responders. I tell Absolutely. my kids those guys are the true and men and women are the true superheroes I look forward to the day Donna Nutsi from the city of Santa Clarita I thank you for your time with us here today and look forward to talking to you soon thank you